is a story that shook India. So I did post it in Punjabi and I'm posting it in English, episode one. So in 2006, there was a number of people that just went missing in Uttar Pradesh in India. There were two people around their house. People kept going missing. So the businessman's name was Maninder Singh Pandeir in sector 31 in Noida, near Nahari village. And he had a servant in India. It's very common to have servants. Um, people, you know, rich people, they have people that are poor and they're always working for them. So this is nothing new. Um, so what started to happen is that this man would um, have his servant lure people in, kids in, anybody from the ages of three and up. I think the oldest was maybe 25 years old. It didn't matter for a, um, a woman, child, boy. It did not matter. They were mostly ladies. So what happened was after they would lure them in, they would um, rape them, strangle them. First few bodies he um, buried in his backyard. And I'm talking deep digging. They were buried in their yard. After that, um, kind of like Dahmer, I think, they started to cut them up into little pieces and start to eat them. Their organs were also given or sold, and this was a full business, to a doctor who lived just a few houses down. The poor people, you know, that lived in slums complained that their kids were going missing. Up to 31 people went missing. All right. It's really important to know that in India, there's so much corruption, as in many other countries, that when they went to the police, they said, well, okay, we got your complaint and kind of did nothing about it until they went to a third party nonprofit organization who went and started investigating on this, went to the police and the police had to do something. Later, those officers were suspended when um, head honchos came in, did a lot of investigation. So there are people um, that had their daughters missing. I remember one case that um, they, the girls had an argument at home. They left their house. Somehow they ended up at his house. Um, they were later killed. And, um, of course, the servant, they're saying, um, was having sex with the corpse and had that attraction. Later, after cutting them up in pieces, they would have parties, I hear, at the doctor's house. Guess what they served over there? Okay. The craziness to the story is that there's so much that happened. They found so many skulls. They found a house by the drain. Um, police wouldn't come until something like that had happened. There's something called a, um, a resident welfare association. And that was the nonprofit I was telling you guys about is the one that went and found the decomposed hands at which they contacted the police. And they finally decided to go ahead and um, you know check up on what's going on over there. As soon as that hand was found and neighbors had a bad feeling, you know, the neighbors and whoever it was. Later, the servant, they're saying, confessed to six killings of children and 20-year-old woman referred to as the name Pyle, meaning ankle bracelet. That is the translation into English. After sexually assaulting them, the families ran over there with photographs, you know, started doing some digging and stuff. Um, it didn't matter to them. You know what your situation was only thing that mattered was you had organs that are working you're young nobody's really going to care if you're missing and they did what they had to do it's ridiculous the amount of evidence that they found at this man's house he's a businessman he had many properties in Punjab as well um he was living a good life he had his own family the, the businessman and he had his kid had a wife live somewhere else um, the servant had two kids of his own. So it's kind of like, it's, it's amazing to me because that we think, oh my gosh, he has his own family. How could you do this? What kind of person does it take? You know how we hear serial killings? There's usually one person. These are two. The things that are going to blow you away is after they got arrested, okay, and charged. The servant got charged with 12 counts, Okay. Up to 19 bodies are saying that they found. There are at least 31 or more. And this is just in one year, people. Not over the span of five years. One year. Um, they went there. They got sentenced to um, the death penalty. Both of them did. And guess what? 14 years later. This is absolutely mind-boggling. That 14 years later, 
their attorney and money talks. I am telling you big time, money talks. They were let off. They were let go. Charges dropped. And you know what they said? Why the charges were dropped? Lack of sufficient evidence. So, you know, you think you find a skull. You think you find a bone. This is stuff they sent to different parts of India. The DNA samples to figure out the person. And another place they would send the DNA to find out the age of the killed, of the murdered. They were let off, okay? And these people, now, who knows where they're living, what they're doing. All right, when, and when they went and asked um, the owner, Bandir, his wife that lives in Chandigarh, um, that is a place in Punjab, she said, I know nothing about it. We don't talk to him. You know, we have a, a strained relationship, which the officers later found out was untrue. They said his behavior was described as normal, said a senior police officer, okay? They went and searched his farmland that he had in Ludhiana. That is also another city in Punjab in northern India. And they even investigated recent kidnappings in that area of Chandigarh. They reopened many cases, but they're saying nothing was found, okay? But they're saying 15 to 17 skeletons were discovered in the village. Now... Let's just think about this for a second. There was inquiries done. Um, They said in Hyderabad, that is a different location, is like on um, west of India, where they sent this. Agra, where the Taj Mahal is built. That's another place where they sent. And they ended up paying 200,000, which is maybe, I think, $1,500 US to to family. And they said the families returned the checks. And they said the checks were not enough. They demanded jobs and compensation as well and I think that's nothing I think you lost your child um that is nothing that this man had to pay okay um and if he if he didn't do anything why did they they let him out right he didn't do anything they let him out um then please explain to me why was this money given to them right there's a lady that I am listening to here and she says that my son would have been or my daughter would have been 23 years old now this that and the other they also had um charges of pornography they put it online. You know, they had a laptop that, that had a webcam, of course. Um, and I'm just not understanding this all this pedophilia that they did, that they are let loose. Okay? Um, it's just sickening to me that this man, the businessman, Pandher, P-A-N-D-H-E-R. There was a movie, I don't know if I told you guys already, Karma Killings. Karma Killings is based off of this story. Um when they found the laptop and found nude pictures of him um, and foreigners during this international visits that he had recorded on his laptop, they later discovered that this is this man's grandchildren. And the laptop was returned to the family, but it just, it's just sickening to me that organ trade, cannibalism, uh, pornography, you know, there's so much that's happening and these people are let off like oh well you know you did 14 years ago go ahead and kill another 30 40 people or 100 people you know no one's saying anything it is the power of money it is sad to me that these families who had not just their their child kidnapped had raped their organs sold strangled to death sex with the corpse pornography and god knows what else they did with them before they chopped them into tiny pieces and fed them to people and ate them themselves, okay? Buried them, did whatever they had to do. Um, So they ended up saying that Bandir, the businessman, had nothing to do with this. Of course, right? The servant just happened to grab these people and start doing this to them. Um, But he's in your house and you know nothing about it. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, They raided the house they sealed off the house and the doctor that was um selling the organs they said um, in 1998 they had possible evidence that he was selling organs and they had the same issue well guess what he was let off too um this is just crazy to me of what goes on sometimes and nothing is being done the cbi did an investigation um with the pressure from the government of india and, and up government and they did, you know, hand over the inquiry from the government and um, sent a letter. 
they made proper requests and whatnot. But he, what's telling me is that even having the headquarters involved, a CBI, okay, and nothing was done, okay? And you can go there, I guess, if you have a lot of money, is what I'm saying, is do all this and get away with it. Something just doesn't sit right with me. And CBI is the Central Bureau of Investigations. Um, I, and I have a timeline of the convictions. Uh, it's, this is just a hard story because I spoke, I spoke about this yesterday in Punjabi, you know, and um, I think I'm giving lots of detail here as well. They're saying both the accused Maninder Singh Pandey and Savrinder Kohli were given a death sentence on 13th of February 2009. This case was classified as rarest of rare, okay? On May 4th, 2010, Kohli, the servant, was found guilty for the murder of Arthi Prasad, a seven-year-old, given a death sentence eight days later. He's still alive, guys. September 22nd, 2010, the servant Kohli again was found guilty on April of 2006 murder of Rachna Lal, who was a nine-year-old, on April 10th. On December 22nd, 2010, Kohli's servant was found again murder of Deepali Sarkar, a 12-year-old, again death sentence. Um, April 15, 2011, Supreme Court upheld the, de- the death sentence of Senator Kohli, okay? December 24th, 2012, he was found guilty of the June 5th murder of Choti Kavita, a five-year-old, given his fifth death sentence, Okay? Um, this is, I know he had a total of 12 sentences. Okay. Um, how, how does this happen? How do you get this many death sentences and how is it that you just get let off? Because the businessman now not only helped himself, of course he had to help this guy because they were both in on it, even though the servant got more years because he didn't have a good attorney and whatnot. But this guy made sure of that, that, Hey, you know, she'll take handle this, you know, you're working for me. But if anybody has not seen Karma Killings, I don't know if you can get it in English, I definitely recommend watching that because this is a story that just um, that shook India, honestly. You know, and I'm just surprised that after all this happened, that they were let off and nothing was done about it. Um, something's not right here and something needs to be done, but we can only do so much. I thought this was a good story to talk about. This is a very long podcast today, but this is one of the stories. I will be bringing more stories. Um, we have a missing person story as well. I'll be sharing on my next podcast about a woman that went missing in the year 2000. Never seen from or heard from her ever again. We've done months of investigation and you'll be surprised. We will do a podcast that has more than one person on that one. And I will definitely do that in English and one in Punjabi. I'll sum it up. But thank you for listening. Ruby Bassi will be back again. Thanks. Bye-bye.